If you listen to what Tesla just said, if you listen to what General Motors has just said, if you listen to what Ford has just said, if you listen to what Hyundai is saying it's doing, if you listen to what Mercedes has said, Volkswagen has said, uh, Toyota even as well, there's only one possible logical conclusion. Jobs in the American automotive manufacturing sector will reach an all-time record within a very short period of time. Manufacturing in the United States is back in a big way. In fact, in a bigger way, I believe, maybe than ever. Crazy Newsweek this week for Tesla. One thing that I haven't seen reported on pretty much anywhere else except from Paul Foss, who's part of the Electric Viking Facebook group and a writer for a number of different websites, is Tesla's plan to produce twice as many batteries as the entire global production in 2022 themselves. This is a huge goal. Is it actually feasible? Should they do it? Well, here's what Tesla plan on doing, and here's my opinion on this decision. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the YouTube channel that makes more videos about electric cars and battery technology and renewable energy than anyone else. Over the past 18 months, we've done over 2,000 videos now. Just want to say thank you to you guys for coming on this journey with us. It's been amazing. So one thing that people seem to have missed is that Tesla said, disclosed at the Q3 earnings call. In fact, Elon repeated it three times. So if you don't like Elon, maybe move on to another video because otherwise you're going to get all worked up and angry about this one. Anyway, he said three times that Tesla plans on producing 1000 gigawatt hours of batteries a year. Now, we can't 100% confirm that Tesla plans on producing 1000 gigawatt hours of 4680 cells a year. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I mean, Tesla didn't explicitly say they were going to produce 1,000 gigawatt hours of 4680 cells per year. And they didn't explicitly say that those batteries would remain the same chemistry they are. They could be a different chemistry. I think they will be. I think most likely Tesla will move away from using nickel and focus on using manganese in order to be able to reduce the amount of lithium it uses in the batteries. Now, I believe that's what Tesla has been working on with Jeff Darn in the lab and he's proven that that battery chemistry works and makes sense and would make these batteries significantly cheaper to manufacture than what they are today. But that's just my two cents. Let me know what you think about that idea in the comments below. So Paul says in his article that Tesla just started making battery cells recently and it plans to make more than the rest of the manufacturers in the industry combined. Some have been doing this for 30 years. Some are new to the game, like Tesla. Well, to be fair, I don't agree Tesla is new to the game. They've been working with Panasonic now for a long time, what, a decade now, producing batteries. So Tesla has had a fair bit of experience. Remember, the battery cells that Tesla use, that Panasonic make for them, do contain Tesla's particular cell chemistry, which clearly gives their vehicles pretty damn good energy efficiency. I mean, have a look at the cars coming out now, right? They're old battery cells. These cells have been around for many years. There's brand new cars coming out from manufacturers right now, within like the last week, BMW. The last month, Nissan. The last few months, Toyota. Their efficiency in these cars is significantly lower than Tesla's. And they're using, you know, brand new battery packs. So clearly, they've worked out how to make these vehicles. And it's not just to do with the motors. It's not just to do with Tesla's efficiency in other areas. The batteries are clearly part of this. It's all part of one big puzzle piece. Now, vertically integrated, Tesla will make the battery cells, building the 4680 batteries, and of course, the packs themselves, the structural packs. They'll make the battery precursors, the cathode and the anode materials, and they will refine the minerals. Now, they're obviously building a refinery right now in Texas. So that will save Tesla a significant amount of money. Now, we've seen over the past, what, decade of experience that if you want to make money selling EVs, there's only one pathway to do it that we know of that human history has actually proven so far. That's vertical integration. I mean, only two companies making money from selling EVs, one of them making more than the other, obviously, but only two companies making money from selling EVs. No one else is. Clearly, 
those two companies are vertically integrated. It's pretty clear that that's not just some sort of wacky coincidence, right? It's pretty clear that that is causation, right? Now, Tesla are confident they'll be able to capture all the incentives in the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, for building batteries. That includes the most well-known and discussed $7,500 US dollars per car available for consumers, which if Tesla sold 5 million cars a year domestically, that would be $37.5 billion a year to consumers. Now, I want to remind you all, for those who are not aware of this, every country in the world massively subsidizes its own automotive industry. So even if you're against these subsidies, realistically, if it means companies manufacture vehicles in the United States, the battery packs, the batteries themselves, the motors, all the parts in the car, that would transform the American automotive industry in a way that none of you fully understand. When I say none of you, maybe like 1%. The truth is, people don't understand. When General Motors builds an EV, tell me where all the parts come from. Most people are just completely unaware. You know who, you know who GM's biggest supplier is for its, for its electric vehicles? It's not GM. It's not GM. It's two, it's, two, it's two companies owned by South Korea. It is, right? LG Chem and Hyundai Grobus. They're the two biggest suppliers to General Motors. It's not General Motors manufacturing their electrical parts in the US. They make some of them. But this will change that. The IRA will change that. More and more companies will do what Tesla are doing and start actually sourcing their products in America, manufacturing them in America rather than going... Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, our, our cars, they're made in Mexico. Our cars, are oh, they're made in California. They're made in the US, but where are all the parts coming from? Why are none of them in the top 10 of most American-made cars? Why are they not American-made? Why are they not even considered American-made? Because more than 50% of the car is being made outside of America. When you bring that manufacturing back to America, remember, one direct automotive job supports an additional 10 subsidiary jobs. You're talking millions of jobs that will be created. Remember, every single automotive industry in the world is massively subsidized by its own country. The Chinese are whining, the Koreans are whining, the Europeans are whining about the IRA. The truth is they're doing the exact same thing in their own countries, just indirectly or directly not talking about it, not making it public. Now, moving on, Tesla says, it can achieve $35 a kilowatt hour for cell manufacturing times a billion kilowatt hours. That's another $35 billion a year. $10 per kilowatt hour, they claim they can achieve for pack manufacturing times half a billion kilowatt hours, assuming half batteries go to energy storage and half the vehicles is another $5 billion a year. Now, I've heard people criticizing this. Some people on the comments are saying, yeah, that's great, but CHL can make a pack for five dollars. They can assemble the pack together for five dollars. Tesla can, uh, even if they can do it for ten dollars, CHL is so much better. That's great, but is CHL doing it in the United States? Are they? Are they planning to do that in the United States? No, they're not. They may do so in the future, but the pack cost to assemble the pack won't be five dollars when they do them in the U.S. They have to pay U.S. wages. They can't pay Chinese, but in some cases, slave labor wages. They have to pay US wages. They'll have to compete with Tesla for employees. So you can't compare the cost of manufacturing batteries in China with the cost of manufacturing them in the US because that's what CATL will have to do if they're going to compete with Tesla in the US. And that's what people are saying. They're saying, oh, but CATL's costs are less. Yeah, of course they are. But can they supply manufacturers in the US? Probably not. Not if they're selling the cars in the US because manufacturers won't want to buy the batteries from them if they're made in China because they won't be able to get the subsidies. So everything comes down to the subsidies. You've got to keep that in mind when you're comparing apples for apples. It has to be the comparison here. To those of you critiquing Tesla's decisions here, make a fair judgment here. Be objective. Compare apples with apples, not apples with oranges. I keep seeing over and over and over these bizarre fictitious comparisons which hold no weight when you actually have a look at the facts. Now, Tesla says 30 to 50% energy storage tax credit for 10 years will guarantee huge growth in that market. Now, realistically, in my view, for Tesla to get huge growth in the energy storage market, they need to be, they need to have access to lithium ion phosphate cells because energy storage does not make sense using lithium ternary, using batteries with a nickel-based chemistry. It does not make sense. They last 
nowhere near as long as an LFP battery. Energy storage will never, is not, it just doesn't make sense unless they're LFP or sodium ion batteries. That's why I believe Tesla plans to ramp its energy storage products by using Goshan High Tech. Goshan High Tech are building a big multi-billion dollar factory in Detroit. And I believe they actually signed a contract with Tesla about a year ago to supply Tesla with around 200 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries per year. I reported on that because I found that information in a filing on a Goshan high tech stock filing in China. Now that may be incorrect. It may be correct, but I believe that Tesla, that contract was signed between Goshan and Tesla. So that's Tesla's plan for energy storage. That's how they'll be able to sell a lot of energy storage, getting the cells from Goshan. Now, Elon Musk also mentioned that Tesla are on a path outlined at Battery Day to achieve a battery cell cost of $70 per kilowatt hour without any of the above subsidies. I've seen all the naysayers saying that's not going to happen. Tesla can't achieve that cost. Are you dim? Like, are you really dim? How dim do you have to be to, to make those claims? You have to be the most dim-witted of the dim to say Tesla can't achieve that. There's only one company on the face of the earth making... 20% plus margins selling EVs. Only one. It's Tesla. No one. No one has done it. I mean, GM, can they do it? Are they, are they making a profit on EVs? No, they're not. Ford, they said they're making a loss on EVs. Yeah. Volkswagen, they said they're making a huge loss on EVs in comparison to Tesla. They said the automation is nowhere near Tesla. Their costs are way higher than Tesla. I mean, seriously, if anyone can figure out a way to achieve cost reductions needed to bring the price down, it's Tesla. Sure, yes, competitors will do it as well. They'll do a good job of it. GM with LG Chem, I find that hard to believe they'll be able to bring that cost down significantly, but they might. Clearly, if you doubt Tesla's ability to reduce its manufacturing costs, you just haven't been following the company or you've jumped on the hate Elon Musk bandwagon and it's clouding your judgment. Just move on from that. Move on, there's no need to hate anyone. It's pointless, it's a pointless use of emotion. I'm seeing it everywhere now. All over Clean Technica, all over Electric, hate on Elon Musk. Why bother? Why waste your energy? It's a total waste of energy hating anyone. Just move on from it. Get on, who cares? If he's the richest guy in the world, don't worry. Jealousy is not a useful emotion. It doesn't do anyone any favors. Honestly, people's judgment, their emotions, they're constantly manipulating themselves into these massive cortisol. They're pouring cortisol into their, into their bodies on a constant basis. You know what that does? You know, it just increases your weight gain. You gain weight. You feel stressed. You don't sleep well. Just move on from jealousy because it's having a negative effect on you. It is. There's no question about it. So what does all this mean? Well, before I get onto that, remember my video talking about Tesla's supercharged network and what it plans to do with that. It's installing its mega packs at its charging stations so it can become one of the largest energy distributors in the U.S., It'll buy energy when it's cheap from the network, sell it to EVs all over the country when, well, when it's expensive. And when is energy expensive? At superchargers, it's always a much higher price. That's where you can charge a premium. Now, in addition to that, remember, Tesla is working on a way for charging providers to get the renewable fuel subsidies that ethanol gets today. And President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law has direct grants for interstate charging which Tesla will likely bid for. Plus, remember, Tesla's charging network, yes, it does have to compete with other charging networks, but we've all seen what the other charging networks are paying to install their charges in that filing from the Texas government. It's a lot more than Tesla pays to install their charges. That just gives Tesla one significant advantage in creating their charging network. They have a captive audience, plus they have the cheapest manufacturing cost to install the charging stations themselves. Now, in the past, for the past 12 months, Tesla has been on a completely unfair playing field in the United States, completely unfair. It's been ridiculous. I've commented on it here many times. I'm shocked this even happened. The fact that this happened to me is insane. Uh, The most American car manufacturer in existence right now has the first, second, fourth, and fifth most American-made cars in America has been punished with a $7,500 punishment. That's the reality, right? All the competition, except for GM for a little while, have been getting a $7,500 subsidy. Tesla hasn't. So things are going to change. Right now, Tesla has huge demand in the US, but the demand's only going to, it's only going to get bigger because all those buyers pretty much, what, in a couple of months from now, 
we'll be able to get the $7,500 US tax credit and much of the competition won't qualify. That's a huge benefit for Tesla and spiking demand. Now, by the time that demand starts to curb off, which it eventually will, I believe Tesla will be able to get their production costs down further and that will give them a pathway to reduce costs easily while still maintaining industry leading margins. Now, personally, the value of my stock in Tesla has gone down a fair bit over the past few months, but I'm definitely not considering selling. If anything, I'll be buying more once the opportunity arrives. Don't get confused by the media. Elon Musk selling some stock a little bit to buy t Twitter or whatever. It's a side story, it's not relevant. Here, I'm interested in the business, the business fundamentals. The future of Tesla is very, very strong. They have a plan, and even if they don't deliver on all of that plan, they'll deliver on a lot of it. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.